So this is a fairly straightforward graphical analysis problem. And in this case, we've got a car that is accelerating, staying at a constant velocity, and then coming to a stop. So in order to look at the variables that we're needing here, we're going to draw a velocity time graph. So we'll start with our axes, like so. And I'm going to put velocity on this side and time over here. And I'm going to space this out roughly about five seconds apart. So this is five, this is 10, and this is 15. And we're told that the car accelerates from rest to 30 meters per second after five seconds. So I'm going to put my 30 mark right there. So there's 30, of course, meters per second. And I'm going to get a constant velocity like this. And then it's going to travel at a constant velocity for another 10 seconds after that. So that's over here. So that's 10 seconds like this. And then what we have is I'll extend this allowed to around here to 20. We know it comes to a stop within two seconds. So it's going to go like this. It's not drawn as accurate as you'd like, but you can probably work out that that means this is going to be 12 at that particular point in time. So what we're asked is the maximum acceleration and also the displacement. Now, the maximum acceleration, at least in magnitude, is the steepest part of our slope. So we have an acceleration here, and we have an acceleration here, though this is a negative acceleration, but the value, this magnitude, is greatest there. So to work that out, in the case of a displacement time graph, it's simply the slope, the rise over the run. Now we have the rise over the run is going to be negative 30. Why? Because we end up at zero, we started at 30, zero minus 30 gives us negative 30, and the time frame there is two, and so what we get is negative 15 meters per second squared. So that's the value for the acceleration. I'm sure you can do that part as well. Now, what about the displacement? Well, the displacement for a velocity time graph is determined by the area underneath the graph. So what we need is this particular area. Now there's two ways we can look at this area. We can see this as a triangle, as a rectangle and a triangle, or we can see this as a trapezium. That's the way I'm going to do it. And of course the trapezium, our area, is equal to a half a plus b multiplied by h. Now from our perspective, it's this which we know is automatically 12. We know this here is 10 and the height here is 30. So there's our mathematics. So what we have here is 12 plus 10, which is 22. We multiply it by a half of 30, which is 15. And that gives us a grand total of 330 meters. So there's our answer.